Volvo S80 of the second generation, 2006-2016 years of release. Good day if you are wondering is it worth buying a second generation Volvo S80 and what problems you may encounter during operation, then you are at the right place. So a considerable price seems justified since the Volvo S80 pleases with a reliable assembly, high quality paintwork and good interior materials. Unsurprisingly, even 10-year-olds from neat owners still look fresh and tidy, unless the leather steering wheel is wiped off with age, but even this can be considered a blessing. A slick steering wheel indicates a huge mileage. You can only scold the Swedish sedan for the soft headlight caps. Polishing helps to bring them back to their original appearance. In addition, the front optics are prone to fogging. The owners of the Swedish sedan often do not try to solve this problem. Chipped front and rear arches are another matter entirely. If left unattended for a long time, small foci of corrosion will gradually begin to appear on the arches. By the way, the headlights on the Volvo S80 can be dismantled simply and without the need to use a complex tool. This attracts pity thieves who, along with the optics, usually remove the radiator grill. Interestingly, the car thieves are not interested in the Volvo S80 itself. Classmates from BMW or Mercedes-Benz are hijacked more often. However, it's worth checking to see if the car has closed. The fact is that the keyless entry system and central locking on the Volvo S80 can be naughty. The rest of the electrician is practically a problem. You can complain about the weak door limit switches and the overriding alternator clutch, but against the background of the problems that the owners of the German Premium face, it all seems like a trifle. Diesel versions of the Volvo S80 in our secondary market are catastrophically few. Sedans with a 2-liter 4 turbo engine are not visible either. The bulk of the copies put up for sale have 5-cylinder gasoline engines under the hood, and this is great because, for example, a unit with the index B525. 4T12 has a real resource of 500,000 kilometers. By modern standards, it's a cosmic figure. Moreover, the turbine in this engine can last as long as the engine itself. Of the features that the new owner should know, it's worth noting that if the belt of the attachments breaks, it is wound directly onto the timing belt pulley. So the condition of the belt drives will have to be monitored especially carefully. Oil leaks through the seals of the phase shifter couplings are one of the most well-known problems in the Volvo S80 in line 5. The flow itself is a trifle. Much worse is the fact that the lubricant gets on the timing belt, which can lead to its jumping and subsequent engine overhaul. Oil stains on the belt cover should alert you in earnest. Another potential problem is the whistling oil separator in the ventilation system. The point is a leaky penny membrane, but the manufacturer recommends changing the entire assembly, which is much more expensive. Fortunately, the Volvo Club services specialists have already mastered the repair of this unit. The six-cylinder petrol engines are also pretty reliable. They even have a timing chain that can withstand 300,000 kilometers. Another thing is that to service the chain drive you need a special tool and 8-9 hours of working time. So having bought a car with high mileage you should set aside a considerable amount in advance to replace the chain. Maintenance for a Yamaha 60 degree V8 is even more expensive. Due to the design features, the flagship motor had to be supplemented with a balance shaft, the bearing life of which leaves much to be desired. This is also true for the accessory drive roller. In addition, in an attempt to make the 8-cylinder unit compact, the engineers made the oil passages too narrow. With age, they become clogged, after which the engine ceases to receive the required amount of lubricant. The vast majority of Volvo S60s are equipped with a classic automatic, which can be found on Mazda, Ford and Opel cars. Even the early versions of the box do not raise questions in terms of reliability. In addition, servicemen are often advised to supplement the unit with additional cooling radiators after which the automatic transmission becomes almost eternal. Naturally, provided that the oil and filter are changed every 40-60 thousand kilometers. By the mark of 300 thousand kilometers, the control solenoid and the bushing of the oil pump may wear out. Due to the development of the latter, the oil pressure drops, which entails accelerated aging of the clutches. Since 2011, second-generation automatic machines have been installed on the Swedish sedan. The manufacturer changed the type of lubricant in the box. The new oil unfortunately ages faster than the old one. Accordingly, it will have to be changed more often, every 40,000 kilometers. Sometimes there are all-wheel drive versions of the Volvo S80 on the market, in which the torque is transmitted to the rear axle using a Holdex clutch. The same scheme is implemented on the Volvo XC60 and XC90 crossovers. The disadvantages of the all-wheel drive system in Volvo cars have been long for a long time. 
but they are not so acute on the sedan. Affects the halo of car habitat. Hardly any S80 owner will go to conquer even the minimum of road. Although in any case you should be prepared that by the mark of 100-120 thousand kilometers the clutch will start to be capricious. It all starts with bumps and delays and in the worst case the car will even turn into a monodrive one. In general when replacing the working fluid every 60 thousand kilometers the resource of the AWD system may well reach 200 thousand kilometers. The Volvo S80's suspension is good. It will need a full bulkhead only with a run of 200 thousand kilometers, although of course some elements of the chassis will not survive until this time. The struts and bushings of anti-roll bars will withstand 100 thousand kilometers, the levers of McPherson struts 150 thousand kilometers. The so-called active suspension on the Volvo S80 is best avoided. Although it's reliable, the cost of a branded shock absorber suitable for such a suspension can cause shock. It's unlikely that in the case of a used car such expenses will be justified. A number of components for the electric parking brake are located directly under the underbody. They are constantly attacked by salt and reagents, which is why after a couple of winters the car may find itself without a parking brake. The seemingly normal brake pad replacement in the case of the Volvo S80 should be carried out by a specialist. The shoe removal procedure is performed programmatically. If you do not know this, the car can be left without brakes. It's impossible to say unequivocally about the time of replacement of brake pads and discs. Everything will depend on the driver and his driving style. It goes without saying that a sedan with an 8 under the hood will have to call in to the service more often to replace the brake pads. Steering rack repair is required in the range from 152 to 100,000 km. At the same time, the tires will still be quite viable at this point. The Swedish sedan was created on the same platform as the Ford Mondeo. This allows significant savings in the search for spare parts. Of course, you can take the first part you came across from Mondeo and put it on the S80, but after talking with the masters and reading the specialized forums, you can easily make a list of replacement parts for yourself. However, even without looking for quality substitutes, owning a Volvo S80 won't be ruinous. Perhaps in terms of prestige, the Swedish sedan is inferior to its competitors from Germany, but in terms of reliability and unpretentiousness, it wins with one goal. If you are the owner, then be sure to leave a comment about this car. Your review will definitely help others with the choice of a car.